All right, so picture this. Imagine a world where even the fabric of space-time, you know, the very essence of space and time, it's not just this static, unchanging backdrop, but it vibrates, it pulses with this hidden quantum rhythm. It's a pretty mind-boggling concept, right? I Absolutely. And that's exactly the kind of territory we're going to explore in this deep dive. We're delving into some groundbreaking new research that suggests that gravitational waves, you know, those ripples in space-time we've only just started to really detect and listen to, well, they might actually have this quantum side to them, a quantum nature. Exactly. For decades, our understanding of these waves has really been grounded in Einstein's theory of general relativity. It's been our cornerstone. Right. But now, the recent work of Dr. Parthenandi and Dr. Bibas Ranjan Maji, they've thrown open this fascinating new possibility. The possibility that these grand cosmic phenomena, these gravitational waves, they might also be playing by the rules of quantum mechanics, exhibiting behaviors that we usually associate with the tiniest of particles. It's pretty revolutionary. Okay, so let's rewind a bit. Let's just kind of set the stage for folks who might not be super familiar with, you know, the nitty gritty of all this. Sure. For like a century, right? Einstein's theory of general relativity has been like our go-to explanation for gravity. It describes gravity as this warping, this curvature of space-time. And so when massive objects out there in the universe, like black holes or neutron stars, when they accelerate or collide, they create these ripples, these gravitational waves that propagate outward like ripples on a pond. And we've always treated them as these classical phenomena. Yeah, exactly. General relativity, it does an incredible job of describing how these waves move, how they interact with space-time. But what's so intriguing about this new research, about this new perspective, is that it suggests these waves might also have these intrinsic quantum properties. It's almost like, you know, you look at the surface of a pond and it seems smooth and continuous, but then you zoom in and you realize it's actually composed of all these individual water molecules, each behaving in these strange and wonderful quantum ways. And that's where things get really interesting, right? Yes. Because Dr. Nandi and Dr. Maji, their model doesn't just stop at saying, hey, there might be some quantum stuff going on with these waves. They actually propose that gravitational waves could potentially induce quantum entanglement. And entanglement is this super weird, super fascinating phenomenon. It's like this spooky action at a distance, as Einstein called it, where you have two particles linked in such a way that they share the same fate no matter how far apart they are. Exactly. And the researchers are saying that gravitational waves, these macroscopic ripples in space-time, they could actually be instigating this spooky action on a cosmic scale. Right, and what's particularly profound about that is the implication for space-time itself. If these waves can actually entangle quantum systems, it really suggests that space-time at its most fundamental level might also be operating according to quantum principles. It's hinting that gravity, you know, which we've traditionally thought of as this smooth geometric property of space-time, might actually be a quantum field. Like it's quantized, you mean? Exactly, quantized, composed of these fundamental particles that we call gravitons. Just like light is made of photons, the idea is that gravity might be made of gravitons, and these gravitational waves we're observing could be the result of, you know, the collective behavior of these underlying gravitons, these little packets of quantum gravity. So hold on, just to clarify, because this is huge EB, demonstrating entanglement caused by gravitational waves, it's not just some theoretical curiosity, this would be a major game-changing discovery, right? Absolutely. If we could actually detect entanglement that's induced by gravitational waves, it would be a massive leap forward. It would give us this really concrete, observable link between the kind of abstract world of quantum gravity theory and the actual universe we can measure. Right. It would be a whole new avenue to try and reconcile general relativity and quantum mechanics, which are currently these two incredibly successful but very different descriptions of the universe. They don't quite fit together neatly yet. They don't play well together at all, do they? Not yet. So when we talk about observing these effects, I know we have these incredible gravitational wave detectors like LIGO, which are already doing amazing things. But I have to wonder, are they sensitive enough to actually pick up on this quantum side of gravitational waves? Yeah, that's the real challenge right now. LIGO and other detectors like it, they are these marvels of engineering. They can detect these incredibly tiny distortions in space-time, you know, the ones caused by these cataclysmic cosmic events like black hole mergers. But they weren't specifically designed with the goal of detecting the even fainter, more subtle signatures of quantum effects. Right, okay, so that's where Dr. Nandi and Dr. Maji's work comes in, right? They've developed a theoretical model to kind of bridge this gap. Exactly, they've laid out a theoretical framework for what a next generation gravitational wave detector might look like. One that could potentially have the sensitivity we need to probe these quantum phenomena. So what does this hypothetical next level detector look like? How does it differ from what we have now? 
Well, in their model, they envision detectors with mirrors attached to arms, kind of similar to how LIGO works. And these mirrors would be capable of moving and vibrating. But the key difference lies in how classical and quantum gravitational waves would actually interact with these mirrors. Okay, so what's the distinction in there? So a classical gravitational wave, it would cause these very specific predictable patterns of motion in the mirrors. But a quantum gravitational wave, these hypothetical ripples from a quantized gravitational field, they could lead to something much more interesting. They could cause the different ways the mirrors can oscillate what we call their oscillation modes to become entangled. Entangled. Okay, now I'm picturing like a mirror doing the twist or something. What does it mean for these oscillation modes to get all entangled? Haha, -ha. well, not quite the twist. Think about this way. Imagine a guitar string. When you pluck it, it vibrates at a specific frequency, right? That's its oscillation mode. Right, right. So what Dr. Nandi and Dr. Maya are suggesting is that quantum gravitational waves could entangle these specific vibrations of the detector mirrors. So instead of both mirrors just jiggling in the same way because a classical wave passed through, they would be moving in sync, but in this uniquely quantum correlated way. Okay, so it's not just that they're moving together because of a classical force, but it's because they're linked in this spooky, entangled way. Exactly. So this specific pattern of entangled vibrations, that would be the smoking gun, the evidence that we're actually seeing the quantum nature of gravitational waves. Yes, precisely. It would be like, you know, you have two wind chimes miles apart and they suddenly start swaying in perfect harmony, not because of any wind, but because they're somehow linked on this deeper, invisible level. That's wild. And while our current technology isn't quite there yet, I mean, we can't detect these super subtle quantum effects, this theoretical framework. It provides a clear roadmap for where we need to go, right? Absolutely. It gives us specific things to look for, ways to design future detectors that might be sensitive enough to pick up on these faint whispers of quantum gravity. So let's assume for a moment that this research pans out and we do eventually manage to observe gravity and dist entanglement. What are the immediate implications? What new doors could this unlock? Well, the most immediate implication is that we'd have the first concrete experimental evidence that gravity does indeed operate at the quantum level. It wouldn't just be theoretical anymore. That in itself would be revolutionary. It would completely change our understanding of how the universe works at its most fundamental level. And beyond just confirming the quantum nature of gravity, could this research help us understand other big cosmic mysteries? I'm thinking dark matter, dark energy. The things we know are out there, but still have no idea what they actually are. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. It's thought that a deeper understanding of quantum gravity could give us completely new insights into these really perplexing phenomena. It might provide explanations for dark matter and dark energy that we haven't even considered yet. It's really exciting. It sounds like we need to step up our cosmic listening game then. Are there any new detectors in the works that might have this kind of sensitivity that could potentially detect these quantum signatures? Yes, actually, there are some really promising developments happening. For example, there's the planned LIGO India Observatory, which is expected to come online around 2030. It's being designed with even greater sensitivity than the current LIGO detectors, and there's a lot of excitement around what it could potentially observe. Cool. And beyond just building bigger and better detectors, there's also a lot of research happening in areas like quantum enhanced measurement techniques. These techniques could potentially allow us to squeeze even more sensitivity out of existing detectors. So it's almost like we're using the very principles of quantum mechanics to build better tools to listen for the quantum whispers of the universe. In a way, yes. It's this beautiful interplay between theory and experiment and close collaboration between theoretical physicists like Dr. Nandi and Dr. Maji and the experimentalists who design and operate these tech actors, that's gonna be absolutely crucial. It seems like this research into quantum gravity is part of this larger wave of advancements we're seeing in quantum technology as a whole. You know, things like quantum computing, quantum cryptography, all this stuff seems to be moving forward at an incredible pace. Right, exactly. And all these different threads are interconnected. The progress we're making in quantum computing, for example, that helps us simulate more and more complex quantum systems, which could then inform our understanding of quantum gravity. And advances in quantum sensing, you know, building more and more precise quantum sensors, well, that could feed back into developing better gravitational wave detectors. It's like this virtuous cycle, this feedback loop of quantum discoveries. And as quantum technology continues to advance, our ability to explore and potentially even confirm these theoretical ideas about quantum gravitational waves, it's going to improve drastically. So let's just take a moment to let this all sink in. 
If we ultimately find that gravitational waves do indeed have these quantum properties, what's the big takeaway? How does this change our fundamental picture of the universe? Well, if we can conclusively show that gravitational waves behave quantum mechanically, it would provide some of the strongest evidence we have that space-time itself is governed by quantum rules at its most fundamental level. And that's huge. Like the universe is quantum all the way down? Yeah. It would have profound implications for all of physics. It would change how we think about black holes, how we model the very early universe, everything. Speaking of the early universe, that's kind of where it all began, right? How could understanding quantum gravity through gravitational waves help us look back to those very first moments after the Big Bang? Well, gravitational waves are special because they can travel through space and time mostly unimpeded. They don't get scattered or absorbed like light does, so they can carry information from the earliest moments of the universe. Like little cosmic messengers. Yeah, and if we could see quantum signatures in those gravitational waves from that early epoch, Wow, we might actually learn how space-time itself emerged from the quantum vacuum, how it evolved into the universe we see today. We might even glean insights into the period of cosmic inflation, this rapid expansion of the universe that's thought to have happened in the first fraction of a second. It's just mind-blowing to think that by listening to these incredibly faint signals from these incredibly violent events in the distant universe, we might be tuning into the fundamental quantum nature of reality itself. Well, this has been an incredible deep dive. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been my pleasure. It's a really fascinating time to be studying these things. And thank you, our listeners, for joining us on this incredible journey. As you go about your day, just think about this. If space-time, the very fabric of our universe, is operating according to quantum mechanics, what does that say about the nature of reality as we experience it? Could the universe be far more interconnected, far more probabilistic than we ever imagined? It's a question to ponder. Until our next deep dive, keep looking up and keep those quantum questions coming.